What is going on guys, it is Bucky and welcome to your fourth lesson or tutorial in how to build a stock market analyzer program in the Java language. So in the last tutorial we pretty much wrote a little method to find the number of rows in our CSV file or stock file and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to take that entire file and convert it to an array. Now we can't really um, use the data right from the file so that's why we need to convert it to an array so let's go ahead and make a little comment say converts the CSV file to an array is spell anything wrong and eh, probably but and now we can go ahead and this is just a little comment to tell me what my method is about to do so let's go ahead and make that method right now public void I'm gonna name it convert to array that way I know what it does pretty cool huh so in this method I'm gonna convert that CSV file to an array so let's go ahead and get started I'm gonna use a for loop to loop through each element in that file and store an array so I'm gonna first need a variable for R and this is pretty much gonna be the row but don't name it row because we have one up here and the next thing we need is we already said that we were gonna create a string array up here called items so go ahead and what we need to do is tell Java how big we want that array to be. So set that variable or array items equal to new. It's a string array. And how many rows and how many columns are going to be in it? Well, we know how many rows are going to be in it, and that's 20 in this case, using our method find row number. And we can't just put 20 in here because each file is different. Uh, so that's why we need to build a method to find the number of rows in the file and we know that the number of columns is going to be seven because no matter what file you have you the columns are going to be date open high low close volume and just to close that's what we got from YouTube so every single file has those same columns so that's why we can put seven and we don't have to have a program to uh, find the number of columns so that's pretty cool so now we made an array that's gonna have 20 rows and seven columns but make sure you put find row number not uh, 20 in there so now let's just go ahead and since we're gonna be working with file let's go ahead and put a try catch statement so try and then just go ahead and we might as well do our catch right now catch exception e and then just go ahead and put like system out print line and just print e and hopefully we will never be seeing that but um you know we needed it so so now in our try statement what do we want to do and this is going to be the code that is actually going to happen and as long as we didn't um fudge something up okay i said fudge so you know it's good fudge all right let's go ahead and get our buffered reader again buffered reader oh name it reader again equals new buffered reader I mess anything up why is this all underlined and now let's go ahead and as a parameters type new file reader make sure you caps that a d reader and put file right here and you guys should know what this does from the um, uh, last tutorial this pretty much reader is gonna read your file so now what we need is another variable called string line and set this equal to null for now what this is going to do is temporarily store whatever line this reader is going to read. And let's go ahead and uh, I guess we can start reading those lines. So now what we're going to do is make a while loop to loop through each line of your file. So how do you loop through each line of your file? Well, let's go ahead and put while that line variable. Actually, we're probably going to be wanting to put this in parentheses. While that line variable and we want to set this equal to reader dot read line empty parameters is not equal to null and what this means this loop is going to keep going and going until it gets to an empty line and when we get to empty line it means we're done with our file so this is pretty much gonna loop through all the important stuff in our file and it's gonna set that line equal to whatever line it's reading at the time so what do we want to do as long as we're in the important stuff of our file? Well, what we want to do is something called tokenize a line. So put string tokenizer 
and you need to put this because this is a built-in class in Java and make sure you import it up here if you didn't import java.util.string tokenizer string tokenizer name a variable something called Z um, equals new string tokenizer make sure you spell that right and the parameters this takes I forgot to tell you what string tokenizer does is pretty much let me get my file out computer C stocks Dow what this is gonna do is go through each one of these lines and break up this data into little chunks depending on the information we're given so we want to break it up in chunks depending on where the comma is so we want this chunk and once we get to this comma separate it and then we want this a chunk the comma separates it and have this chunk so in order to tell what chunks we want as data it takes two things the first one what line are we going to be reading and the line is going to be equal to read line and the next thing what do we want to separate it by and since we have a comma separated file let's just go ahead and put comma as a string whatever you put in here is that's what it's going to look like for the separator so if you have a file separated by um, colons put that but since our separated by um, commas just go ahead and put that so now what it's going to do is take each line and break it up into chunks depending where that comma is so in each of those chunks is called a token so now we can take these tokens and set them to the elements in our array so now let's just go ahead and put another while loop in rate z while string tokenizer has more tokens right there and this pretty much means all right by the time it, as it's running through the line I mean we don't have to run this after the line is done we only want to do it as it has more stuff to go through while it has more tokens what do we want to do make sure I got my parentheses right there well what we want to do is make a for loop to loop through the columns pretty much so int C I'll put C for columns equals zero and again we need a for loop to loop through seven times since our column has seven put C is less than seven and remember this is never gonna reach seven this is pretty much well let me finish this right here before I start talking C++ what this is gonna do is for every row it's gonna find the value of C zero one two three four five six and remember since arrays start with zero that's why we're starting with zero and going with six so zero to six is actually seven elements and that's how many columns we have and what do we want to do just take items and set the R C so the very first thing it's going to do is zero 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 one zero two zero three zero four zero five zero six and then it's going to go to the next line one zero Two one or excuse me one zero one 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 two one three then the next line two zero two one two 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 three and it's going to take each of those elements and set it equal to the token that it finds so z dot next token and this next token method is built in so how easy is that so that's pretty much all we have to do for this method and as it goes through each element in here let me pull up my DAO again it's gonna say alright as the as soon as we get this first token it's gonna set this equal to zero 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 one zero two zero three and then it's gonna do that go to the next line one zero one 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 two one three and it's gonna do that for your entire document right here so now what we have instead of this document we have all this information in an array so we did that just by using a couple simple loops and a couple simple tokens so we pretty much broke all of this into chunks and put it where it needed to be in our array and in the next tutorial I'm gonna be showing you guys how to test this array to make sure it got in right but as long as you followed everything as I did um, you should be good to go so that is how you convert a CSV, CSV file to an array so thank you guys for watching don't forget to do this it's a very important step oh and one last thing you need to do after this for loop take your row and increment it by one so that way um it loops through a different row each time and wow that was important but anyways thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you next time